Welcome to this demonstration. This is a follow-up to a lab that we completed in class and it's the meiosis portion. The mitosis lab has been summarized in a different video and I'll provide a link to that at the end of this. But for this lab we're going to show just one pair of chromosomes and we used pink to designate the chromosome that you got from mom and the blue to represent the chromosome you got from dad. And they look like this because they've been copied. And if you recall from the cell cycle that the, during the S1 phase, they, they copy. So originally they would have looked something like this, and then they copy and they look like that. So we're going to start with just one pair. Remember there are, in a human, there are 23 pairs. And so this would be happening to every pair in the cell. So we're going to start with this, and this is a diploid cell. Now during prophase, the nucleus goes away, the chromosomes condense, and then we enter into the next phase, which is metaphase. Now this is the part that's really different. This is one of the key differences between mitosis and meiosis. In this phase, in metaphase one, instead of lining up like this, which they did for mitosis, they're going to line up next to each other, and they're actually going to wrap around and coil up. And this is where you would see crossing over happening. Now we're not demonstrating that with in this example, but pieces of the blue could actually get transferred over to the pink and vice versa. But for this this demo, we're just going to leave them as if they did not cross over. Now this is metaphase one. They line up next to each other and they form what we call a tetrad, which is you know basically four chromatids lined up in a row. And then what another big difference is here for anaphase is that when in meiosis when they pull apart they don't separate at the chromatid so the 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 each individual pink chromatid is going to stay together for this and it, it it's basically going to go like that it's going to pull apart like that so i'm going to leave these in here though for demonstration purposes and then we will go down to the next one and that's anaphase one and they are going to end up looking like this so the chromatids stay together but the, the chromosome that you got from dad moves to the left and the chromosome that you got from mom moves to the right. And so this pretty much, now telophase we would, we would form a line down the middle and we can do that on here and basically create two cells and then these two cells are going to move on down to the next portion of the, of the illustration. And this is going to go away for a moment and the next part is that these are going to carry down into meiosis 2. So we're, we're basically going to, for demonstration purposes, going to show two separate cells. Cytokinesis doesn't actually occur in between these two, in between meiosis 1 and meiosis 2, but for purposes of demonstration we're going to do that. So these two chromosomes are going to be shown now individually like so. So we're going to make this one go away, put this one back, and continue on with the next round of, of division, which is meiosis 2. Another key difference between mitosis and meiosis is meiosis goes through two rounds of division. So now meiosis 2 is, is really similar to mitosis in the process. So, so for metaphase, the chromosomes line up, or the chromosome goes to the middle. The spindle fibers will grab on and pull the chromatids apart now, just like in mitosis and it kind of they they are usually illustrated with this kind of a bent look as if they're being pulled kind of at the waist or the middle section and and being separated so we would have something like that and then for the pink one it would look just like that also like this and what we've created then is four cells and how they are different we started out with a cell that looked like this. So we started with a cell that looked like that with a pair of copied chromosomes, but we ended up with four cells only with one of the chromosome, or only one of the pair. So what we've done is we've gone from a diploid cell which has both pairs, or both chromosomes of the pair, to haploid cells which only have one. So if you want to think of a pair of shoes, essentially what we've done is taken a cell that had both the left and the right shoe and created a cell that only has the left and another cell that only has the right. And then we've created four like that. So this this is what how we get our gametes. And then this for this illustration, we just kind of go, 
go down here and we show that those four cells can either turn into four sperm cells, which is what these show, or in the special case of an egg, what happens there is we only end up with one. And this is considered, you know, we would take one of these four and one would become the chosen one and that would become the egg. Well, in this particular diagram, we're just going to drive or take this blue down here and show. Now, y y it's, either, it's one or the other. You're either going to create sperm or you're going to create egg. But this just shows both possibilities. Now, the difference here is that in eggs, we only create one and then we create these other support cells and they're called polar bodies that are not going to be involved directly in the reproduction if a sperm meets up with an egg. So this is a little bit more complex and it's, it becomes even more complicated when you show another pair and that's what the next part of the lab is going to be. You guys are going to show me the, what would happen if we had two pairs of chromosomes to look at instead of just one. So uh, this basically summarizes meiosis and this is how we create our gametes, our sperm and our egg.